This is Dave McCain with the Right Tree Genealogy doing another video and today I'm covering a special topic to me because of a research project or research uh, name I've been doing for over 30 years and, and uh, I want to go ahead and get into the, this uh, particular presentation. Genealogical Paper Trails. The Kentucky Department for Libraries and Archives or known as KDLA saved the day. I went and done some research there for other names and other projects but this particular one I felt was necessary to present to everyone to show that you can get in paper trails from an archive in this case it's the KDLA the Kentucky archives but you can do this in any state most states have records you can check on and see if you can find what you're looking for so the specific research question that has driven me for years is who are the parents of Susan Cooley born 1834 of uh, Carter County and the wife of Jacob Riley of Lewis County that's my mom's great-grandparents I've been doing this for over 30 years and it I felt that it was time to take that next step and go into other records I, I've researched tax records census records uh, marriage records and one particular surname combination had come up to me and intrigued me over the years and that's a, a marriage of John Cooley and Nancy Sarton in March the 3rd 1832 if you look at that that falls in line with the fact of they could be the parents of Susan because she was born about 1834 however there's other people other Cooleys in the area that could be her parents and at that point in time I really didn't have uh, any first person statements that would say hey this picks this one over that one again though I kept leading myself towards the John Cooley and the Nancy Sarton especially since my mom had mentioned that she knew she was kin to the Sartons somehow now here's some quick information about John Cooley and Nancy Sarton they were separated and this is important to know they were separated in 1848 and finalized their divorce in the Greenup County order books in 1850 John however was remarried uh, in between there on April 16th 1849 to Amelia or Millie Castile now that ha causes an effect of the 1850 census because the youngest children he had with Nancy are listed in the census with him and his new wife uh, Susan Cooley is not now I will say this here in the 1850 census is really the first time uh, in the country that we were really listing all the other names besides just the head of the household I have multiple instances when not everyone's listed in this case she would have been about 16 years old she could have been with other family members etc a lot of different suppositional statements we can make but she was not in this census a another point though I want to point out here is uh, John sold land to Jacob Riley and it is her husband in 1859 and then Millie the new wife of John gave up her rights to be the admin of the estate and asked and he put up the bond Jacob Riley did to to do the estate of John Cooley in 1860 when he passed away now for the part that you came to this video Kentucky Department of Libraries and Archives had a particular case in Lewis County that actually to me finalized the connection of John Cooley and Nancy Sarton. KDLA is in Frankfort, Kentucky. They do have original court records for different counties and in this case very specifically Lewis County records uh, case number 9348 Raleigh versus Evans. Now that's how it was titled in the court case index was Raleigh versus Evans. Now I was down at KDLA, I researched a lot of different topics and looked in Lewis County and was looking under Riley. I didn't know anything about the Evans at the time. It just, okay, I'm gonna record down these particular cases and I'm gonna research those and see what I find. And this is what I found. Jacob Riley versus Anthony Evans. Over to the side here you see just kind of an image out of the folder. I'm not gonna go through every sheet. I'm only going to go to that which is important to this paper trail and this genealogical answer to the question. And uh, this was in, it looks like, if you look over here, it, it looks like November 25th, 1871, but it's actually very faint, 1876. And the deposition getting ready to come up is in 1877. Now I'm just going to go to the one that helped solve this problem. You can get important information from deposition in a court case, and that's what I want to say here. These are original records. And you go, okay, who's the name of the respondent or the witness? 
you know, where are they located and what time frame is this in? Is this a genealogical uh, relevant time frame, contemporary time frame for the match you're trying to research? Because if it's not in the same time frame, then that's not going to help you. And this is Jacob Riley versus Anthony Evans. William Sarton is the one giving a deposition in Vanceburg, Lewis County, which is the county seat, on October the 6th, 1877. And again, that particular case. Now, here's a question that was posed by the prosecution or by the plaintiff's attorney. And he asked the question, where you live, occupation, do you know about this land, basically? He said, I'm 27 years old. Okay, that's important because he's not an, an older man in the county. He's also not a younger child. He's in that mid-20s, meaning he's been farming for years. He's been doing his occupation for years. He lives in Salt Lick Creek, which is near where the property uh, that is in question is. And he makes a statement down at the bottom. I don't have blocked here. He's known of this land for eight to nine years. And that's important because he has an understanding of what was there before and after Evans got a hold of the property. Now, here's where the biggest thing is. The defense attorney did a, a counter or examination on uh, William Sarton, and I'm going to read this directly. This is a key question asked by him. Examined by W.C. Halbert, Jr. Question number one. State what relation, if any, are you to Jacob Riley, the plaintiff in this action? Answer. His wife is my cousin. That was huge because by stating cousin, the traditional statement of cousin, if I say, oh, he's my cousin, well, we kind of generalize it more now than back then. If they said he's my cousin, that generally referenced first cousin. If not, they would say, oh, he's my second cousin, third cousin. He's a relative. If it's past that first, second cousin time frame. So that's a key piece of information on this document. Well, let's take a look at additional information here. The importance of this original record is alignment. Nancy Sarton, 18, uh, born about 1818, had a brother named Andrew Sarton, born uh, about 1814. Andrew's youngest son is James William Sarton, born about November 1849. And the reason I say about is because different records show between 1848 and 1851 as his actual birth year. In the 1870 census, and this is an important one to note here, William lives in the neighboring house to Anthony Evans. Well, Anthony Evans is the person in question for this court case. Again, living in proximity to or near where this property is. Basically, what this defines is, is Nancy's children and Andrew's children are first cousins. This information aligns with what that court case says. So comments on this. With all paper trail information in hand, and again, I have other records. I just want to show what came up from this court case. It's a first person statement in a court case, legally stating that they were 27 years of age, which made them born about 1849, that they were a cousin to uh, the wife of Jacob Riley, which in this case, Susan Cooley is his wife, and that would fit in line with Andrew Sarton. KDLA's original record retention, by having those records in an archival setting, have saved the day for me. I was able to take those records, and once I had that, that's a first-person statement, along with all the other records I have is what I consider indirect records, I was able to say, I can add John Cooley and Nancy Sarton as the parents of Susan Cooley. I also will make this key note at the bottom of the page here. Over, the, over several months, uh, AT or Cousin DNA uh, has proven that the Sarton surname is at the uh, great great grandparents to the matches based on my mom's connection at this point. Sarton is definitely one of the surnames, falls in line with this marriage and all those records. What I want to say is this, going and seeing the original paper genealogy records at a state archives, any state archives, in this case KDLA, you can look at a court case, not just the tax records and census records and probate records, but other cases, things that happened, they, there was land disputes and other things. You can find genealogical important information, in this case a first person statement of being a cousin, help me go ahead and place this name on the tree. 
Well, I want to say thank you for watching this video. Please consider subscribing right here. I have attached the video right here that I referenced for the KDLA field trip that I made and another playlist here for other how-tos. Let's continue learning together.